Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome an artist who gets candid about life, work, and a name. And that is what I wanted to highlight today. What is a name? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Okay, I'm going to go off the rails a little bit. Not like in a crazy rant kind of way, more in a sense that I'm going to defer from business for a little bit because I want to talk about our names. And I'm not talking about a business name, one that we search for inspiration for online or in life, then search again online to ensure nobody has that name. Not that kind of name. I'm talking about how we are addressed kind of name. First, what is a name? It is a word or a phrase that constitutes the distinctive designation of a person or thing. It is a word or symbol used in logic to designate an entity. For example, my name. A lot of individuals refer to me as Gabe, which by definition of the name is my name, but it is not my given name. Gabe is a condensed version of my name that became quite popular around the second grade. My real name is Gabriel. And to be quite honest, for a long time, I hated my name. I didn't want to be called Gabriel. My name was Gabe. It wasn't until I watched Gerardo Ochoa's TED Talk in McMinnville back in 2019 where he talked about getting it right, why pronouncing names correctly matters. That's when I began to think of my own name change and that of others. The lecture discusses his name change to Jerry in the fifth grade, and I would encourage anyone listening to take an opportunity to YouTube the TED Talk. But why is getting a name important? According to Dale Carnegie, an American writer and lecturer, A person's name is to him or her the sweetest and most important sound in any language. It is our own personal identity. Sure, others may have the same name, but using it properly is a sign of courtesy and respect. More importantly, the feeling we get when somebody remembers our name after meeting us, the feeling of importance, I'm sure some of us know what that feeling is like, myself included. Even the Bible talks about the importance of a name. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Proverbs 22.1 To be esteemed is to be held in great respect, admired, simply for properly pronouncing an individual's name. In fact, there was a 2012 study titled, Teachers, Please Learn Our Names, Racial Microaggressions and the K-12 Classrooms to determine the growing negative impact mispronouncing someone's name has on kids, just like Gerardo Ochoa's story and so many others. According to another study by the University of Toronto Muck School of Global Affairs, do large employers treat racial minorities more fairly? A new analyst of Canadian field experiment data. This study found that resumes with white-sounding names were 28% more likely to get a callback for a job interview. Now, this is not just an American issue. Here is another stat from a survey conducted in France. 30% of the big businesses in France preferred candidates with French-sounding names, while resumes with North African-sounding names were less likely to receive interviews. So, here's a few tips to help. Ask the person to pronounce their name and actively listen and repeat it. Ask if we got it right. It is okay if we mispronounce it a few times, and it's even okay to come back to ask if we properly pronounce the name the next day. If we can learn how to pronounce words like quizzes, honestly, that is just a weird word, then I think we can figure out other names too. Observe and practice. I still to this day sit in my basement practicing my less than stellar Spanish. I mispronounce English words during discussions all the time. Hell, I even mispronounce words on this podcast. But one thing I try to do is clarify my guests' names before they come on. I never want to ruin the episode by setting up the show with my guests feeling I didn't even care enough about their business to remember their own name. Again, clarify. It is okay to say, remind me your name again. That is okay. And recognize when you, in fact, did mispronounce it. Again, it is okay to apologize and ask for clarification on how to pronounce an individual's name. Lastly, be an ally. If you hear a colleague or a friend mispronouncing someone's name, help them out. If that's you receiving feedback, take it to heart. Do not be arrogant about it and get upset when somebody helps you pronounce their name. 
For the individuals having their names mispronounced repeatedly, it's time to take your identity back. A simple, I want to quickly say my name is pronounced should do the trick. And don't forget to help them out. My name is Gabriel Flores. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest is a Portland-based photographer with over 20 years of professional experience. An award-winning documentary photographer in the international raw artist and a member of Photography Without Borders, please welcome artist and teacher, M. Martinez. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with the owner of M. Martinez Photos. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm so excited because we've been, we've been actually chatting, mm-hmm. right? We've been ta- talking a little bit. And so I, I'm really excited for this first question because we, we kind of started talking about it a little bit. <laughs> Introduce the world to M. Martinez. M. Martinez. Well, I was born to two teenagers in Garden Grove, California. And when I was born... My parents really wanted to make sure that I had every opportunity to be successful in American society. My abuelito, my grandfather on my father's side, came from Mexico. And so my name had a lot of thought put into it. They gave me an English name, uh, Michelle. And for many years, I was known by that name. But actually, I go by Micaela, which is the Spanish version of my name or Mika for short. Nice. So, so give us a little background. Where uh, you know, originally from Oregon, or where are you? My father was in the army, so nice. I moved around every three and a half years. <laughs> uh, it was quite an experience, but I was exposed to a lot of different people, ideas, cultures, and I'm really thankful for that. That being said, we settled in Washington when I was a teenager, and so I I graduated from there. Nice. I'm. Fiercely independent, and so uh, by the time I graduated, I had already been living on my own for about a year. Oh, nice, nice. So let's let's talk about the M. Martinez photo, which it's it's not just photos, right? So let's let's tell the tell the audience what what all is it. Well, uh, M. Martinez photo stemmed from this desire to create connections and really make memories and really focus on an experience. I used to work in corporate photography for many years, and that was really the basis of my education uh, in photography overall. And so when I left that industry, I decided that I really wanted to create a business that was not so much based around a need for photos, but um, a memory and an experience and really a connection with those that I was working with. Now I work with people who want to, who really want to be working with me and I'm excited to tell their story and, um, create that moment. In addition to personal sessions and events that I photograph, I also create personal projects, art projects, um, that are focused around creating more representation and changing narrative in media around body positivity. Nice. Um, the, the list on what that goes on is, yep. is pretty vast. And then the third part of M Martinez photo is I am a teacher. So I am now sharing my knowledge and experience with young creators Nice. What, what exactly do you teach? I teach photography nice. for uh, Studio Latino and also young audiences and right brain. Awesome. That is great. 
So how did how did you start this business? Is this business like an LLC, a C Corp, S Corp? So I have been a photographer for more than 20 years. And when I decided that I wanted that I I didn't want to be in corporate photography anymore. That was not really my my scene. And I left, I hadn't really thought about photography as a business until I started creating my own thing and realizing that I don't have to form my business like the business that I had been in before. I didn't have to um, focus so much on numbers and sessions, but more or less on those connections that I was talking about. And so I would say for about the past seven years, I was just an artist for hire. Okay. Um, and then I recently registered my business within the past, you know, three years. And now I am an LLC. Nice. Nice. And why did you decide to go the kind of that route? Why did you decide to finally, you know what, I'm going to be a certified business? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> As a... As an artist for hire, I learned a lot of hard lessons. Oh, okay. Um, one of them being I lost my hard drive. Oh, I've done that before on my podcast. And that's, yeah. It's devastating. Yeah, I'm, <sighs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so hard. Some of the work was able to be recovered, but a lot of oh, it wasn't. Man. And um, thinking about my business in long term and not just at that moment of Mm -hmm. I'm photographing this person or this event, but what are we doing with this, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, and really just starting to think about photography as a business. Yeah. Yeah. Even like the podcast, trying to think about it as a business has been interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Taking I, any kind of art and turning yep. it into a business is different than creating a product yeah. that you're trying to put out there and sell. Yep. I, in fact, it's kind of funny you say that. I, a former guest, Devon Horace, I actually reached out to him this morning. I'm like, you know, you've been doing very well about putting out products. I am very foreign to putting out a product in production and actually, you know, selling it. How do you do this? You know, I want to, I want to kind of learn more. Now, is this your first business? Well, when I was younger, I was an independent contractor for another business. Um, It was a phone consulting. And I, again, learned lessons the hard way. (laughs) (laughs) I learned then that accounting, getting an accountant is so important. Um, And that was actually one of the things that I was apprehensive about to start M. Martinez Photo Mm, for many years because... I didn't know if that was something that I was wanted to invest in in that way. Right. Do I really want to invest in things like having an accountant? Yeah. And yeah. QuickBooks. Yeah. <laughs> That's not cheap. No. I, I know. And, and that it's kind of interesting because, you know, I'm in this kind of in this growing process right now. And I'm like, man, I'm just kind of just stick with Excel. <laughs> it's so much easier. Now, what has been kind of difficult, this transition from corporate or first, actually, let me ask, why did you decide to go from corporate photography to independent? Well, when I was doing corporate photography, the model of that industry didn't necessarily allow me to connect with people. Mm. And I had worked my way up through that company, through those companies to a point where I was a district training manager. I was going around to other studios and not only training their associates and their managers, but really working on their, their photography. Mm, And I didn't feel like a photographer. Uh, It, It took the joy out of it. And I remember someone telling me that like I had no soul because all I cared about were numbers and hitting goals. And that hurt. Oh, I bet. I'm sorry. That's rough. You know, but that's what that, that's what that corporation, that's what that industry does. And that's, that's not something that I, that fed my soul. And so one of the things that I think about, um, with success and photography specifically is that when I started, I had this idea of what a photographer was. If you are a professional photographer, you work in a studio, you make this much money 
and you have all these clients. And that may be true for some photographers, but that doesn't have to be true for all professional photographers. And when I left that industry, I had the opportunity to explore art. I had the opportunity to work with organizations and really express stories that I didn't have the opportunity to do before. And the reason I got into corporate photography is because I didn't have access to a camera and I wanted to be a photographer. And so if I wanted to be a photographer, I had to get a job somewhere and you had to start somewhere. And that was where I started. Yeah, that's that's a great, great point, you know, where you kind of do have to start somewhere. And I, let's let's kind of talk about the difficulties of it, because it sounded like, you know, when you're starting your photography, you didn't have a camera. And so you started a business. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's let's talk about the difficulties first, you know, starting in the corporate America and then starting your own business. So working in corporate America, first of all, I graduate living on my own since before graduating didn't necessarily allow me the ability to be formally educated. So I had to learn on the job, Mm. which is part of where I got all of my pitfalls um, as an artist. When I, I was with somebody who, whose father was a Canon brand ambassador. And so this was my first access to cameras and photography and thinking about it as a, as a profession and not because his father was a professional photographer, but because we were working with professional equipment Mm. and I got to view it in a completely different way. Yeah. And when that relationship ended, so did my access. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) And I wanted to learn. I wanted, yeah. this was something I was excited about. And every photography position that I took gave me more knowledge and confidence to be able to create my business now. When I left the industry, I was disillusioned. I was like, I'm done with photography. <laughs> and I remember a friend being like, but you love this yeah. and you have this eye you can't be done with it. And so they gifted me a camera. Nice. And so with that camera, I just started exploring the art again and discovering what is it that I like? And if this is something that I want to make a business, how can I make this a business and still feed my soul in ways that are nourishing? Yeah. What about, what was the difficult part about, transitioning out of corporate America and kind of being your own independent sole proprietor? I didn't know what to charge. Ah, yeah. I didn't know. There was a lot that I didn't know. And I'm thankful to my friends and family and people who really just believed in me and were like, hey, I need my family's photos taken. Will you just come take them? And I was like, I'm still new at this. That's okay. Come on. Yeah. And I built those relationships and came away feeling like, hey, this is something that I can do. I like it. What, what, you know, one of the things we were talking about, you know, you started in the beginning as your parents gave you a specific name, right? Mm -hmm. Michelle to kind of be successful. We also talked about, you know, previously before we started recording, we talked about, you know, I'm a Latino, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a Hispanic. I'm a Latino. Hispanic was a word that was created back in the 1960s by the, by the United States government, right? To do differentiates us from individuals from Spain. Now you mentioned you're a Chicana. Mm -hmm. What are some difficulties in the business world in that area? Part of why my business is M Martinez photo is because one, there is that back and forth about my name. I go by Micaela, Mika for short, Um, because I really want to embrace my culture and it makes me feel closer to my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And that's the name that I identify with. Um, Being a female photographer in this industry, people have ideas of what you're capable of or what to expect. And I found that by going by M. Martinez, people looked at my work And less at my gender. And I felt like, I don't want to say not judged, but 
Like I had more opportunity. Yeah. That's, that's difficult. And I think that's one thing that throughout the world, I think, and even the corporate settings too, right? Oh yeah. It's sad when you tend to feel you're getting overlooked because of the seven second rule. Mm -hmm. Right. For this first seven seconds, they're going to make a, they're going to make a a assumption about you in the first seven seconds. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What about, has there been anything easy through this process? I don't know if I would say necessarily easy, but there are moments of celebration. Nice. And celebration for me is feeling like I'm growing as an artist, like I'm making that difference, like I'm moving forward. I don't think that I would have started my business without the support of my friends telling me, go big or go home. Like, this is something you do. You're good at it. You're, you're, you, you, you know it. And offering me the support to be able to, to make this happen. If it wasn't for organizations like MISO or Mercy Corp, I wouldn't know about having to get an accountant or about some of these legal forms that I need to be using as a, as an artist, as a photographer. Um, and I'm very thankful for, for that. So I would say the, the celebrations, I wouldn't call them easy, but I, I would definitely say that they're there. And so where, where do you see the business going? Where, where do you, where do you project it in the next five years? In the next five years, I would like to I'd like to be to still be teaching. I think I want to invest more in teaching and supporting young creators um, in sharing their voice. I want to be working with organizations that are making a difference in our community. Um, and I definitely still want to be photographing people. I don't ever imagine that changing. <laughs> I like it. So, you know, you mentioned, um, wanting to work with, you know, other organizations. Why is it so important to you to ensure you're working with organizations that are kind of constantly working with our community? Well, I feel as a photographer, it's my responsibility to be aware of the story that I'm telling with my images. Mm, Um, there it's not my story to tell, particularly when I'm working with organizations like don't shoot Portland or Fridays for freedom. Um, making sure that the narrative that we're sharing is authentic to them and true to the message that they want to be pushing forward. And when I think about where I want to be in the next five years, I really want to teach ethical photography, Mm, um, not just within our community, but, but in a larger. Yes. And I think that's, that's pretty novel, right? I think that's something that needs to probably be highlighted a little bit more. In fact, I would love to kind of hear what would, what, what, how do you define that? Ethical photography comes in a lot of different folds depending on what it is that you're doing. One of the things that I teach my students is our very first rule is if you're going to photograph someone or someone's things, you have to ask permission. Oh, okay. Consent is important. Consent is very important. (laughs) Um, In addition to that, I want to be making sure that people know when you are photographing someone, it's not just that moment, but how is how you're using that image going to impact them later? Ah, uh, yes. That, that's a great point because there's so often, you know, you get these images where they're skewed, right? Because maybe they're at a, a, a unique angle, which is unfavorable or favorable, right, to the individual that's being f- photoed. I can tell you quite honestly right now, I never take a photo with my phone like looking up under my chin because it looks like I have five chins I just just don't that's those those are the things you don't do I see what you mean by that now how do you see it kind of how how do you like envision your students to ask they just kind of hey can I take a photo of you and this is what I plan to do like how how do would you uh structure them to ask that well it's being very mindful of what we're going to be photographing to go into it in in general so Right now, my students are working on a project about um, what 
their after school program means to them, the Sun School program means to them. And so one of the topics was teachers. And so when we went to do that, they had to ask the teachers and tell them that this is for a project that they're doing about Sun School. This way they know why it's being photographed. Um, And it gets them in that mindset of thinking about the purpose behind the image and not just taking a picture. And the confidence of going up to somebody and speaking with them. And I think that's huge too. That's awesome. So what would you say, you know, would, what advice would you kind of give your younger self going through this process? Looking back on everything that you have gone through, what advice would you give your younger self? You make your own business and you define success. Your business doesn't have to look like anybody else's and you don't have to be anything specific that's expected. All you have to be is you. Beautiful. Would you give that same advice to the young ladies or young photographers or, you know, other individuals, younger entrepreneurs, that same advice or what advice would you give them? Absolutely. Your business doesn't have to look like anybody else's. (laughs) (laughs) you can make that business model and create it in ways that are important to you. I think about my family and this idea growing up of what success meant and how do we define it in regards to money, wealth, status. And I can see where and why they think that way because of the society that we live in. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I define it that way Mm. or I have to live that same way. Um, I would say that I am a successful photographer uh, being published and sharing my work across the country. But do I have the success that they would have thought that I would have achieved as a doctor? Probably not. And that's okay. Yeah. Yes, it is. And I think that that's what I would want to remind people is that that's okay. Just because you don't achieve success in one way doesn't necessarily mean that you're not successful. That is beautifully stated. I could not agree more. Speaking of your art, for the folks at home, where can they find it? Where can they find you on social media, on the websites, uh, on the intro net? Where are you at? On the internet, <laughs> on the interwebs. You can find me at mmartinezphoto.com. That is my website. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram is m.martinezphoto. I share a lot of my uh, personal projects there and some of my photo adventures from my travels. So those are different art pieces that are for sale. And then on Facebook, I do have a Facebook page. It's m.martinezphoto. I like it. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.